Hi, in a previous presentation we examined measures of central tendency, and so this is a companion and equally important uh, presentation looking at measures of variation. And one of those measures is uh, fairly intuitive, it's called the range, and that includes uh, the distance between the maximum data entry and the minimum, or sometimes you see that expressed as the minimum to the maximum. So this data set includes a range of values that is 57 at the highest point and 56 at the lowest point. If we subtract those values, we can get the actual range value, which in this case is 11. The deviation shows the difference between uh, an entry X in a population data set and the mean. So we have an X value subtract the mean and that gives us our deviation. So if we have a stock that's worth $56 and the average price of stocks is 61 then the deviation there is minus 5. So how far is that stock value from the mean stock value? We can do that across all these different stocks and then we can uh, look at the, the summation of that. Right, so we can just add those rows together, minus 5 plus minus 3, that gives us minus 8, add 0, still minus 8, plus 2 plus 6, that's plus 8 more, so that gets us to 0. So the, the deviation for the entire frequency distribution, or in this case, or these data set rather, is 0. Next we're going to take a look at the variance and standard deviation which for a population are represented by the sigma squared and the sigma Greek letter. Uh, usually when we see Greek letters that's referring to a population characteristic, whether that be the mean, which was mu as you'll recall, or sigma here for a standard deviation or sigma squared for variance. And as we'll see, uh, the notation for a sample is S, which is just the letter S. Uh, for, a, for standard deviation and S squared for the uh, variance of a sample. And here are the equations. Uh, the equations here are calculated for population, so we have mu, right? So we have uh, the variance has the sum of all the squared deviations. Now the problem with deviations is they can be negative or positive as we saw in the previous example, and they can cancel each other out. By squaring them, we remove that, that property. When we take an average, we get the average variance of the squared deviations. If we want to find the standard deviation, we just simply take the square root of that, and that's why you see this, this same equation here down here, but under the square root. So these are the steps involved in finding the standard deviation of a population. And the first of those steps is to get the mean of the population data set, because we're going to need the mean in order to calculate the standard deviation, as we saw on the previous slide. We then find the deviation of each entry in the data set, as we did with the stock prices, where we were just looking at the deviation. Now, we're not in that case, we weren't looking at the square of each deviation. So what's different about the population standard deviation is that we're going to be looking at the square deviations. And that's step three. After that, we then get the sum of the square deviations as step four. We take the average of that by dividing it by the, the number of cases in the population, in this case. And finally, uh, we take the square root of that, because this step five gives us the variance. We're interested in finding out the standard deviation, which is just simply the square root of the variance. If we want to find the sample standard, or sorry, the standard deviation of a sample, we have the exact same set of steps, but you'll notice the notation has changed. We've replaced mu with x bar, okay, and the n is now lowercase, indicating a sample rather than a, a population number. There's x bar again in place of mu, and it's the same substitution of the capital N with the lowercase n, but everything else essentially the same but the notation, it's important to note the difference between when we're talking about a sample uh, 
and when we're talking about a population in this previous slide. Going back to our example of stock prices, where we looked at the deviation previously, when we square those deviations, as we do in the calculation of the variance and the, and the eventual standard deviation, we see that the values are always positive. Right? Here you see that uh, because some can be negative, they can offset and negate uh, the positive values, giving us the sense of no deviation, when in fact we know there is. So the deviation is not as useful as a measure of uh, variance and variation as compared to uh, the square deviations, which can be used to calculate the standard deviation and the variance, as we said. So the standard deviation is one of the most important measures in statistics. It gives us a very good idea of how our data are distributed. And in this case, this is a very normal distribution. We have an average of 4. We have a standard deviation of 1.18. So you can see as you add standard deviations, you're adding 1.18 to that value of the, the mean. If we had a standard deviation of 0, that would mean that uh, everybody's got a 4. Then everybody, if, if there were 4 cases, all of their scores would be 4. Next, we can talk about the empirical rule, which applies to symmetrical bell-shaped distributions, where the standard deviation has the following characteristics, and that is about 68% of the data will lie within one single standard deviation. If we got the two standard deviations, we're going to capture 95% of the data. And if we got the three standard deviations, we're almost to 100, we're at 99.7. In fact, we don't actually reach 100, uh, we just approach it as a as a limit. So this is a graphical uh, representation of that empirical rule. There you see the 68% within one standard deviation. Now remember that's divided around the mean, so on either direction it's 34%. And we're adding an additional 13.5% to that on either side if we go out to two standard deviations, and then another 2.35 in either direction if we go out to three standard deviations. And for example, we could apply the empirical rule to the study of the values of homes, where the mean uh, home value is 125,000. If we know the standard deviation is 5,000, then 68% of home values will fall within $5,000 on either side, as we see here, and, uh, and so forth. We can also talk about Chebyshev's theorem. Uh, the empirical rule makes this somewhat, at least sometimes, unrealistic expectation of having a symmetric distribution. A lot of things are, by their nature, not symmetrical. In that case, we should not use the empirical rule, we should use Chebyshev's theorem, because it can be applied to any distribution regardless of the shape. This is what we'd call a bimodal shape. This one is skewed, you, you got it to the right, see where's the tail? Or this one that's pretty skewed to the left. And according to Chebyshev's theorem, the portion of any data set lying within k standard deviations, so we have to substitute in the actual number, where k is greater than 1 of the mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared. So if k is 2, uh, then any data set at least 1 minus 1 over 2 squared is going to give us 3 fourths or 75% of the data lie within two standard deviations of the mean. And if k is 3, we can see that works out to about 88.9%. So this is a, a very useful addition to the empirical rule because it doesn't make the same assumption of normality. And so here's an example of Chebyshev's theorem. Uh, the mean time in a woman's 400 meter dash, which is 52.4 seconds. The standard deviation is 2.2 seconds. And at least 75% of the women's time will fall between what two values? And uh, we use the formula. 1 over 1 minus k squared, we can see at least 75% of the women's 400 meter dash times will fall between 48 and 56.8 seconds. Next we're going to look at standard deviation for grouped data, which will be a way to enable us to find the standard deviation for a frequency distribution. Uh, we were examining those in the previous presentation. So the sample standard deviation has this formula, s equals the square root of the sum of the square deviations times f. And there f is what? Uh, the frequency, right? And uh, n minus 1 is the sample. There n is the uh, 
sum of f minus 1. So the example, uh, following frequency distribution, represents the ages of 30 students in a statistics class uh, with a mean age of 30.3 years. We found that when we, we were learning about uh, getting the mean for, for frequency distributions. And so if we come to the back to that same table, we can see how we get to the uh, standard deviation using this formula. And the result is 10.2.